Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can graph LINAR or cloud data inside of Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to be showing you two different methods of doing this. The first method is going to be with just some regular uh, formulas and calculations that you can do inside of Excel. And the other method is going to be with a third party application that makes the process a whole lot easier for you. So let's start off by explaining the LINAR data that I have right here. This line, our data, if we scroll down, it is roughly 55,000 data points and it is of an underwater mountain range. So this is a standard line, our data. It's an X, Y, Z format. And I just want to show that if you go ahead and graph this as is inside of Microsoft Excel, if we go over here and we go down to scatter charts right here and we plot it with this you're going to see that it comes up with several different graphs and neither one of these is what we want you can also graph these in a surface plot and that would also not generate the correct kind of graph that we're looking for now the surface chart is right here and you go down there this will take a little bit of time so as you can see it does have a graph right here, but it is not in a mountain formation, just like the last one was not. So Microsoft Excel reads data a little bit differently than most graphing programs do because it's a data sheet uh, application. It's not really made to graph data. It's for line graphs and column graphs and things like that. It's not really meant to graph three-dimensional data like this. So the first method I'm going to show you, we actually need to condense this down into a XY uh, set of data instead of XYZ. That takes a little bit of math. And before I show you this, let me explain why. If we just select the X column right here and the Y column right here, we're going to graph this and you're going to see a side profile of the mountain range. Actually, this is an upward profile. So at the Z rotation, it's going to be zero. So this is as if we are looking directly down onto this mountain range. And that's what it looks like from a bird's eye view looking down. If I move the other column over to the Z column, we can see a side profile of the mountain. And that's just how XYZ data works. See, we are blocking out the Y section so we can see a side profile of the mountain. Now we can use this to our advantage by calculating this into an XY formation. And I have the formula to do that right here. And I know this is a lot, but I will step you through it. I already have it calculated over here. So you can see this right there. That is our, uh, that is our formula for calculating the X values. And I also have the Y value calculated right here, as you can see. And what all this is, all of this is your different settings or your different input values. So your altitude, which is going to be your X, uh, sorry, your Y rotation, which is right here. And if I change this, you can see that it's going to change the Y rotations. The azimuth is going to be the X rotation. So it's right here. Again, if I change this, you can see that everything changes again. The alpha is going to be the actual calculation where you take the azimuth, multiple, uh, multiply it by pi, divided by the angle, which is 180. That'll give you uh, the correct curve of what you need to rotate the graph. Beta is exactly the same thing, except it's using the opposite axis. And then we have the original x, original y, original z values. This is our string calculation for curving. And finally, the x, r, and x, y this is what you are actually plugging into your formulas right up here. So all this is just your input data. This is your actual calculations. And as you can see right here, this is what you are going to be graphing. I basically just copied these over exactly the way they are right there to plot here. And let me show you what this does. If I select all of this, I can go up to insert and I can go to my scatter chart right here. And as you can see, we had exactly the same graph that we had before. If I change the Y rotation to 180, you can see that now the mountain range is upside down and we are viewing it in a different angle. And I can do the same thing right here. 
So by changing that to 180, you can see that it flipped around again. So let's go back up here, change that back. Let's change that to 90 this time. And you can see that we have different angles that we can view this at. Now you can use this to actually view your LINAR data inside of Excel, tweak the settings around a little bit, maybe add in a third dimension to it. And if you know a little bit more about coding with the graphs, you can actually change the color schemes and things like that. But this is a very simplistic way of graphing LINAR data inside of Microsoft Excel, not using any other third party application. But speaking of third party application, this data right here you still cannot graph in a surface graph this is about the as far as the limitations can go unless you have a third party application that will help you maintain and produce this in a format that excel can read now currently the only program available to my knowledge that has this functionality to be able to take XYZ data, convert it into a format that excel can read and even curve the data so it doesn't have empty data points the only software available for that that I've heard of or found is a program called XYZ Mesh. Now XYZ Mesh, as I said, it was created to take XYZ data, for instance this mountain range right here, and plot it in a way that Excel can read. So I'm going to open this up right here and first off I'm going to just right click and paste the values in. As you can see it's loading. And there we have it. So you can see that our data is currently loaded up and viewing inside of XYZ Mesh. So this is the same type of data that we had previously. It was just different. You couldn't rotate it like this inside of Excel with the current setup with it. Maybe if you wrote a macro or something like that with some mouse input, you might be able to do that. But this is far more fluid than Excel is. So let's go ahead here I'm going to change all this back to zero and as you can see this was approximately the same thing that Excel was graphing and with the X rotation if I change that to 180 you can see that what it is graphing right there it looked approximately the same okay so I'm going to reset these graph values okay so how do we get this into Excel well it's very easy with XYZ Mesh, all you have to do is convert to Mesh, and Excel actually has a limit to how big a data set could be whenever you're uh, plotting surface graphs or something like that, and that's the ultimate goal. So let's say I'm going to drop this down, and let's say we have uh, five decimal points. The decimal points is how many decimal points over you are going to allow for XYZ Mesh to graph. And I'm going to convert this to a Mesh format, which a Mesh format is what Excel can read. And XYZ Mesh actually has this really nice feature to where once it starts calculating, if it figures out that there are too many data points for Excel to read, it'll actually come up with a little window right here and it'll tell you that there's too many data points and you will need to either reduce the decimal point value or optimize for Excel which is that little button right here so I'm going to decrease the decimal point value down to 3 convert this over to mesh and as you can see it's currently working what this is going to do Microsoft Excel has to have its data in a format known as a mesh format. That way it can plot surface graphs and plot areas and things like that. So it looks like a nice fluid graph. And Excel has to have it in that format because it's not exactly a graphing engine per se. Now, as you can see right here, XYZ Mesh has condensed the values down. It's in a mesh type format. And we can even change the color scheme around if we want. So, for instance, color variant, if we select that, we now have a color variation on there. And we can even change this over to a surface graph. So there we have it. Now, this is a very quick, easy way to condense all of these 55,000 data points down into a system that Microsoft Excel can read. Now, how we get it into Excel is very simple. Once we have this done, we go to file and export to Excel and you have all these other options that you can actually plug information in for instance you can plug in a project name location data all this other stuff and all of its optional the one thing we want to look at is the Excel export options so we can have it as a 3d surface graph a 3d wireframe 
a uh, display contour, a display contour wireframe, and if we just wanted the shell, the cell shading, for instance, what's right back here, we can actually just select no graph and do cell shading only. I am going to want it to display in a 3D surface graph, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit export to Excel. Now, because we are taking LiDAR data and it has about 55,000 data points, it's going to take it a few seconds to get caught up and export into Excel. Okay, and there we have it. Now, bring it up right here. You can see that we now have our surface graph. It is using the 55,000 data points that we had previously. It condensed it down into an Excel format that Excel can understand and read. And if we right click on here and go to 3D rotation, we can actually rotate it inside of Excel. And we don't have to do any of those funky calculations that we did previously. And as you can see, it's a pretty solid graph. It doesn't have too many data points. It's converting over fine. So yeah, this is a much simpler way to complete a LiNAR data graph inside of Excel than doing the custom formulas that you had in the other example. Well, I would like to thank you for watching. I really hope that this video has helped you. I hope that you've learned a few things about Excel and graphing inside of it. If there's anything else that you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment down below. Let me know how great I was doing or how awful I did with this video. Either way, I'd like to hear your feedback. It, it better helps me to improve my content later on. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell notification. If you didn't like it, then tell all your friends about it and give them a hearty laugh about how terrible this video was. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let us know how we're doing. Thank you very much.